Hello again, and this is going to be a quick video on anal fissures looking at some of the most high yield points to know for the USMLE step, NCLEX and COMLEX. So let's move right into this. To begin, the definition of an anal fissure is just a longitudinal tear of the anoderm. That's just a um, pretty much a fancy word that's just saying the epithelium of the, uh, the anus area around the anal canal. And that's, this is a longitudinal tear that is distal to the dentate line. Another name for this is the pectinate line. And this is going to expose the internal anal sphincter um, and cause a possible contraction after that is exposed to the outside. So, to, so that's kind of a complex definition, but I'm going to simplify it in all of that in this diagram. So to begin, the pectinate or the dentate line, when you look at a picture, is really just there's an imaginary line. So this isn't actually a real line. This is an imaginary line that splits the upper two-third from the lower one-third of the anal canal. And this is just a rough estimate kind of what I'm showing you here. So in other words, the upper two-third of the anal canal is supplied by a different set of nerves, a different set of blood vessels, etc. And the lower one-third is a different set from the upper two-third. And that's all that's saying. So what you need to know that's high yield is that an anal fissure happens distal to the pectinate line. So that means that it's happening down here at the lower one third. Okay, also you have to know that this is a longitudinal tear. That means that this tear is not going this way. Let me just go up here just to make an example. It's not going this way. The tear is actually happening this way. So this is a longitudinal tear. Okay, and it's happening here distal to the pectinate line. All right, so it's not important to go into a lot of the details of um, kind of the the vasculature and the nerves of the pectinate line from the upper two-thirds and the lower one-third that's more of an anatomy lecture so let me go back and make sure I've covered everything in these points oh also when you have this tear the tear at the distal to the uh, pectinate line let's say the tears here basically it will go past the external sphincter muscle because remember the external sphincter muscle kind of goes all the way circumferential Frenchel, but in this picture it's only showing at the lateral edges to show you the picture more clearly. But this tear can usually go all the way and kind of show some of the parts of the internal anal sphincter, sphincter that's kind of more inside. And this is going to cause, this tear is going to cause, you imagine you start ripping a sheet of paper and here's the opening part, right? Well, what's going to happen is that internal anal sphincter will respond by causing a contraction, which will then pull these parts more farther away. So you're trying to get healing by closing up this wound right here and eventually bringing these edges together. But what you're eventually getting is that spasming that's in response to this longitudinal tear and that makes the healing process even harder. So let's move on to the next part. We're looking at the location of the longitudinal tear. Almost the vast, vast majority of all of the anal fissures that you'll see is posterior to the anus at the midline and I'm going to show you this in a picture. So remember in the previous picture I drew that at the middle and that's where the majority of cases happen. And then when they are when they are at this location, the cause is usually because of constipation, okay? And then if it were in rare situations, if it were to be lateral or and or anterior to the actual anus then it's caused, then its cause is different and it's usually caused by then um, inflammatory bowel diseases, surgery, or a malignancy. So let me show you all of this in a picture. So this is extremely simple um, a diagram I just drew out right here using the shapes um, feature. So this is right here, this is the anus, and then this is the skin, or all of this is the actual skin around the anus. So this would be the anoderm, that complex word that they use for just the epithelium of the skin around the anus, okay? So if you were to have a longitudinal tear and you're looking at this patient and say this is anterior, so this is towards the front of their body and then this is posterior, basically the majority of the tears is gonna be right here at the midline, okay? So the tears, the majority are gonna happen right here. And this is, again, let me remind you, this is gonna be um, distal, this is gonna be distal to the dentate line distal to the dentate. Distal just means it's going to be beneath, it's not going to be in the upper uh, two-thirds, it's going to be in the lower one-third past that dentate line kind of more towards the outside of the body and it's going to happen posterior. That means that it's going to happen from where the anus is located, it's going to happen kind of towards the person's back, going towards the person's back. 
okay? Now, what you can have happen is if you were to have an anterior tear, an anterior fissure, an anal fissure right here, or if you have a fissure that would be one of the lateral sides, all of these are then you're going to be thinking of different causes because this is extremely rare to see. So now we're not thinking of constipation like you would in this location. In these locations, these three, you're going to think of causes like inflammatory bowel disease, um, malignancy, trauma, like surgery, etc. You can see that in surgery and whatnot. So then the causes are different. So that's kind of high yield to know. A test question could say that the location of the anal fissure is so-and-so, whether it be lateral or anterior, um, to the actual anus. And then you need to know, okay, what is the most likely cause? It's going to be one of these versus the vast majority of cases where it takes place at the posterior, posterior from the anus at the midline. See, so it's going to be posterior and in the middle of this, like in, in relation to the actual anus and then that anoderm versus um, these other locations, they're not necessarily at the midline. They can be, but it can be lateral off to the side and then it's, or it could be anterior. Okay. And then, but remember for the posterior situation, which is the majority of cases, the cause is going to be constipation in most cases. Okay. Because of that increased pressure causing a tear towards the back. Okay, so let's move on to the next point. So what are some of the symptoms that a patient will have? Now, the most important thing, instead of memorizing each one of these things, you need to remember this right here. This is the most important thing, pain with defecation. The reason is because oftentimes this uh, anal fissures is confused. So anal fissures, I'll just write this, anal fissures versus hemorrhoids. Okay, anal fissures versus hemorrhoids. I hope I spelled that right. I apologize if I did not. So how the main distinguishing difference from anal fissures versus hemorrhoids that you'll see as far as in questions is this right here, pain with defecation. That's more rare to see in hemorrhoids. You can see blood in the stool in anal fissures and in hemorrhoids. You have itching in anal fissures and in hemorrhoids, but pain with defecation is more talking about anal fissures and that's what you really need to know. So if a test question tells you the patient has pain with defecation, history of constipation, then you need to be leaning towards um, anal fissures as your diagnosis over hemorrhoids. Okay. So let's move to the next point. You can have acute situations of this and you can have chronic situations. Now, this is super simple to know, except for some of the details that I'll talk about that will then make sense. And I'll give you a little mnemonic that helps me to keep some of this straight. So an acute case, well, you know, acute just kind of is more, it just means kind of shorter term. So this is less than six weeks that this has been going on. And this one, in this situation, it's, it will be more red. So it'll be a lot redder in color and you'll be dealing with a little bit more pain versus in the chronic situation. Whereas in the chronic situation, it's going to be, it's been going on more than six weeks. And in the chronic situation, you will have raised lumpy borders. I don't have a good picture for that, but I can draw it out and show you. And it's usually less painful. And then you have two other features that are, is more in the chronic state. You have skin tags which is just this little area of skin that kind of sticks out and it almost looks like a ward. It's just called a skin tag. Now this is important. The skin tag is going to be distal to the tear and then papilla. Now you remember the papilla, like if you look at the, say an epithelium. Now we're, again, we're talking about the anoderm in this situation. The papilla is just kind of this kind of looking like a wavy looking um, surface of it and that's called papilla. So the papilla of the anoderm, if you were to take a histological slide, it would show papilla hypertrophy. But the location it's going to show papilla hypertrophy is proximal, proximal to the actual longitudinal tear. Now, I said all of that. Let's get into the drawing to simplify all of that. So here's, I'm going to draw out kind of what we had saw earlier. So this is right here is going to be the actual anus and then the surrounding area is the anoderm. Okay. Now, what I wanted to show you in this picture is, I'm going to make sure I got everything in this slide before we continue. Yes. So back to our picture, we have the anus here in the middle and then the anoderm. So in acute situations where we're dealing with less than six weeks, it's going to be where the tear is, is going to be, remember the, the most common location I said is going to be post. So this is posterior and this is anterior. So it's going to be a posterior tear at the midline. 
and where the tear is, the color I'm using actually is perfect for this. It will be very red. It will be extremely reddened around the area, okay, and even at the area. That should help you lean towards uh, an acute kind of case, especially, obviously, they tell you the timeline is less than six weeks, okay? Versus a chronic situation. Now, let's draw this again, and let's look at a chronic situation. It's a little bit more complex. So this is, again, the anus, and then this right here, this whole thing is going to be the anoderm. So in a chronic situation, we're still going to put the, um, the fissure here, but in a chronic situation, it won't be as red, okay? So it's going to be more dull color, kind of closer to skin color. And then around the edges of the anal fissure, you'll see this, like, these, oh, sorry about that, you'll see these, almost like lumpy kind of surface. The skin and stuff will be kind of elevated around it. It'll be more like this. And then also you can have a skin tag, but the skin tag is going to be distal to the tear. So the skin tag will show up down here. There'll be a skin tag. And that this is all to help you point towards a chronic cause. And also say it was very hard to see where sometimes anal fissures are kind of hard to see because they, they may, some of them aren't very deep and they don't show up very well. So a skin tag can help you know. If you know that the skin tag shows up distal to the um, anal fissure in chronic situations, then you know if you can see the skin tag, it has to be the, the fissure will be proximal to that. And then again, remember at the very top, you're going to have proximal to the longitudinal tear. If you were to take a biopsy right here of the segment proximal, you would see villus hypertrophy. So whereas before, say in a normal situation of epithelium of the anoderm, you would have like just a papilla like this. Now in this situation, the papilla of this anoderm is going to be way hypertrophy, so it's going to be a lot bigger. Okay, so that's that will happen proximal. Now how do you remember this? Well, the word papilla has a P, P and proximal. So you're going to have proximal papilla hypertrophy, PP. Proximal papilla hypertrophy. So it's going to be proximal, which proximal means kind of closer up towards the top of the body going back in towards the anus. And then distal, you're going to have the skin tag. And I don't know why, this is just stupid, but I always think of like, say you're selling something like a candle, okay? A store is selling a candle. I always imagine that when you put a price tag around something, the price tag hangs down low and the price tag is more distal. See, it's kind of farther away from the actual um, point of reference that we're talking about. I think of a price tag kind of hanging low and it, that's down towards the ground, so distal. Okay, so that's just the way that I remember those points. All right, and then finally, we just have the treatment here. So the treatment needs to happen in this order. Okay, that's this is the order that's going to occur. So first of all, you start, you go from simple to more complex. So you want to look at their diet. If let's say, for example, it's a rare cause. Let's say, for example, the anal fissure is located lateral um, at the, of the anal derm. So that tells you that you're you're thinking more or less. This is not really an issue of constipation. Let's say that in this patient they have um, ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, any of the inflammatory bowel disease. So you would definitely want to recommend certain diet changes. Or let's take for example they have irritable bowel syndrome. You would definitely want to lower your concentration of fats that you take in your diet. So a diet change would be necessary in that situation. And you always want to increase fiber regardless of what their diet is. So it's proven that uh, increased fiber helps with uh, decreasing the prevalence of anal fissures, okay? So if that doesn't work, you start with that, and if that doesn't work and they're still having problems, then you move on to nitroglycerin. So what's the mechanism of nitroglycerin? Remember, it's acting as that um, vascular dilator, vascular dilator. So it's going to dilate the blood vessels, and specifically it's going to work, um, we're going to want it to work at that posterior that's the majority of cases, right? So I'm just taking the posterior in this example. So if we wanted to dilate the blood vessels at the posterior midline um, of the anoderm, then what's, because the reason we're, that this works is because it is proven that at the posterior midline of the anoderm, the blood supply is very low. And so it's, it's vulnerable to ischemia, and that only makes the prevalence of the anal um, fissures more, it makes it, more likely to happen. So that's why these vascular dilators, this nitroglycerin, um, can help in that situation. Okay, and then you try that, and if that doesn't work, then you go to Botox. And so Botox just stands for the botulinum toxin, and that is going to paralyze 
um, that area, basically the muscles and stuff in that area and lock up to where you don't have movement. Thus, and remember, you're paralyzing that paralysis that I talked, that spasm that I talked about earlier. So you're, if you're, if you're causing the paralysis of the muscle there, that means that you're going to have a paralysis of the internal sphincter. And that internal sphincter was causing problems because the longitudinal tear was actually going past the external sphincter and into closer to the internal sphincter. And this exposing of the internal sphincter to the outside environment is causing this uh, fissure. It's basically the internal sphincter contracts and it pulls this figure more open. So now it's even wider and it's and it even makes it harder to heal. That's the reason Botox works because it's going to paralyze the ability of the internal sphincter. And, and even the external sphincter, which can also uh, cause problems. Basically, it will paralyze that area and allow healing to work, okay? And then the last point is surgery, and that's in a really extreme cases where they do, you don't have to know the specifics for the step one exam, but uh, basically what they're going to do is they're going to take this a flap of skin, they're going to cut it in a way that's, they're basically, so say this is the fissure, they're going to cut the skin kind of down here and cover up the fissure with that skin, to stop exposing it to the outside and allow it to heal more so. Okay, so those are the primary points of um, anal fissures that you need to know for the, the USMLE Step 1, the NCLEX, and the COMLEX. I think those are the most important points. If this helped you in any sort of way, please like, subscribe, comment um, if you want me to make any, whatever subject you want me to cover for any of the board exams, and I will see you in another video.